morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Thursday. You are over the hump. We are happy to report. Hey, Claude, how are you doing? Hello, Jacqueline. I am doing so good. I feel like every day on this podcast, you could probably hear it in my voice from like our Monday episode to our Tuesday. Ep- we didn't have an episode Monday, sorry. Our Tuesday episode to our Wednesday episode to our Thursday. I am getting better, recovering from my trip, recovering from my rash, recovering from pretty much everything I picked up on my journey to Mexico, <laughs> Austin and back. Um, and I think I should just start the episode really strong and give everyone a rash update. We need a rash update. And I know how like everyone's like waiting with bated breath to see how my irritated patch of skin is healing. So I will show you. No, but what's the diagnosis? Because you have like terms and you have facts. Yes. So I went to the doctor yesterday and he said it's because I was like coming in there with my web MD. I'm like, I have cellulitis. It's not even web MD. It's toast MD. (laughs) Literally. And he's like, I actually don't think you have cellulitis. It's not this right texture and it's not changing shape. Um, but there's probably just like bacteria from the venom stuck in your arm. He did give me an antibiotic because if you if you wait too long and it is cellulitis, like it can actually be really serious. Like you can lose your arm. So it's venomitis. It's venomitis, but I am on a steroid and a um, antibiotic just in case it is cellulitis. And I kind of just preach for how much I love steroid packs because, you know, my general malaise from the trip, like I had lost my voice a little bit. I'm 24 hours on my steroid and like I'm already feeling back to basics, you know? Are you roided out? Oh, I'm roiding so hard. Like especially in the morning when I take those first couple pills, I get like like I'm on speed. Like I talk so fast and so much and like I can't focus my eyes. That's just what we need. A roided out, Claudia. No, it's it's been a while since I've been roided out. Headline, Claudia's on roids. Tell yeah, a friend. She's- She's on roids and her song comes out tomorrow and she hasn't even spoken about it as much as she should. And also I think point three is important and then we'll get to the song, which is that Claudia does not have cellulitis. Tell a friend. Yeah, tell a friend. It's not cellulitis. But I really want to thank everyone who reached out to me like panicked in the DMs because cellulitis can be really serious and I had never even heard of it. So if I hadn't even seen those DMs, like I probably wouldn't have gone to the doctor. I would have been like, oh, it's fine. It'll and you'd away. just be living with venom and then you would turn into a bee. So here is the update on the actual patch. It's the bump has gone down completely. It's just like discolored and it's not that itchy anymore. So hopefully by tomorrow's episode, I'll be like free and clear. But we'll see. You never know where cellulitis can take you. You never know. And what we do know, though, is that your song is coming out tomorrow in what is maybe like the the shortest lead up to anything that you've ever done. You're dropping a song on us tomorrow. I'm dropping a song on you guys tomorrow. If you follow me on TikTok, like you did get a sneak peek of the chorus last week. And if you follow me on Instagram, you got a sneak peek of the pre-chorus today. So it's called 100%, obviously. It's going to be available midnight tonight on all your streaming platforms. It's going to be kind of the cornerstone of my tour, which picks back up on Thursday. And then we're going like hot for four months. So I just feel like it would be incumbent upon every single person listening to this podcast to familiarize yourself with this song because like it will be the song of the year. And I'm not even like joking. Yeah, I've listened to it a number of times now, and it really gets stuck in your head, so just watch out for that. And I just have one thing to say. We've got power, sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. Thank you. That's a lyric from the second verse that I think everyone will really, really be connected to. There's power in those words. Like, it's beautiful. No, the song is really so good. There's sour in those words. (laughs) This song is so good and so fun and just like another anthemic moment from our queen. Thank you so much. And you know, the last time our song came out, we did a performance on um, our podcast, which is probably one of our most iconic toast moments. If you haven't seen that, familiarize yourself with it. It's on YouTube. Um, But now that we're virtual, like I have to figure something out. It actually might be easier for me to perform my song virtually on the toast on maybe tomorrow or Monday. Like you could pre-record and we could add it to the episode we're gonna figure something out yeah I think that would really add a special touch yeah so stream it Spotify Apple Music everywhere thank you very very exciting I can't wait new music Friday new music Friday we also just have a great episode it's Thursday and there was I caught up on everything I finished cheer I watched euphoria last night was the Real Housewives of Orange County so there's a bunch of TV recap in addition to just like the world turning once again as it always does as it always 
a little update from me on the hobbies front. I got so this is huge. I got so many great suggestions from so many people yesterday about hobbies. Really, there it seemed like there was like ten of like these are the hobbies that we're all doing, which is like paint by numbers. I ordered a paint by numbers, um, paint Puzzles. by dime. Have you heard of paint by diamonds? Is that the one with the wax? It's the one with rhinestones. I don't want. Yeah, and you put it on with wax. I've seen it on TikTok. It looks really think you're cool. Gonna like that. I didn't order it. It didn't. That's yeah. not was not tickling my fancy. But I ordered some like brain workbooks. I ordered a calligraphy set and a, a starter kit like to teach me how to do calligraphy. I feel oh, that's like that. Cool. Yeah, that would it's like something that I think I would excel at. And the piano has made it into the apartment. And by piano, I mean keyboard. Um, no the way. keyboard is here. Practice starts today. I ordered piano books that will be here, you know, in the next few days. Jackie, learn my song. Oh my god! But in the meantime, I can like get piano sh- sheet music on my iPad and play like that. So I think I'm really I have a lot that is you know in front of me, and I think between all of those things, I will find something that I love to occupy me for the next few weeks. That's amazing. I'm so, and you know what you said something on your Instagram story that I really just wanted to echo because a lot of people suggested puzzles, and I've been telling you for years that like puzzles are so you you have such a keen eye you're very smart in like a unique way and I just think you would love puzzles and then when someone suggested it to you you were like I'm down but I don't think that like the current state of my body is um conducive to doing puzzles and I have to say you're a hundred percent right like as a non-pregnant person who does puzzles it's back-breaking work (laughs) I think unless you have some sort of like special puzzle table But you know what? Like my dining table would actually be like a decent puzzle table. It's a good height. It's a good height. There's a bench. But still, like I could just, my lower back aches thinking about it. Don't take the chance. It's not worth it. Okay. I mean, if all of the other things fail, maybe I will go the puzzle route. But that's just where I was at currently. But I will give it a shot at some point in my life because I agree. It seems like it would play to my strengths. 100%. 100 percent percent don't let them forget go hard till the end because you know that we are um also i got a lot of feedback on tiktok when i teased my song people were like this doesn't sound like claudia well guess what it is me and there's way less auto-tune on this song than there was <laughs> on my previous one so you can't win it is me fuck off i find the beginning of the song to be like extremely seductive it's very sexy. It's like the perfect date night. You want to get pregnant? Play that song. Yeah. It's very sexy and seductive. And I think you guys, it's it's definitely, you know, new territory for you. Yeah. And I think it's it's really a song for everyone. And what was your some of your inspiration when you were writing this and performing um, it? I would say my inspiration when writing it was watching the person who wrote it. And that was really inspiring for me as a writer. Um, we I did love help, honesty. Know, of course, no. My friend Felipe, who wrote Toast, also wrote 100%. You know, and as always, it was collaborative. But, like, I would never say that, like, I personally wrote the majority of the song. Like, I had a few edits, a few notes. But I didn't write the song. Yeah. And then, what was the second question? Um, and performing it. Like, where, where oh. were you <clears throat> sourcing inspiration from? That's a really good question because actually this song in particular is in a different key than Toast. And it's a key like I'm not 100% comfortable with. I actually have a very low voice. And most pop popular pop songs are in a, in a much higher key. And so at times when I was singing it, like I definitely felt like I was screaming. But and I was like very unsure of it. And I was like to my producer, Curtis, I'm like, I don't think this is going to work. And he was like, just trust the process, trust the process. And when I heard the first cut, I was like, oh, my God, this actually sounds so good. Great. I think it sounds really good, too. I'm excited Thank for the, the audience's feedback. And you have to start a 100% challenge on TikTok. I know. Okay, so somebody last time, this really, really cute toaster, made a sickening dance to toast. And I don't know if she's still a toaster. You never know these days. But if she is, like, please, we loved your work the first time. Or if anyone who's, like, a big TikTok dancer wants to make up a dance, I will totally do it. I just, like, I'm more of a dancer, not a choreographer. Okay. I mean, you can't be everything. Singer, singer. You can and I've tried. DJ. Yeah. DJ. That was rough. That was. But now you're making the music. But it led me to this place. No regrets. It's also like crazy ass snowing in New York today. So if you're out and about, stay safe. And if you're ordering in food, don't be a dick. Like whenever it's snowing or raining like really crazy, like tip well. And if you can't, then don't order because it's treacherous out there. 
Yeah, it is treacherous, but it's a nice cozy day on the inside. It's definitely a reading day or a piano day. For me, it's a catching up on Sex in the City day so I could talk about it on the podcast tomorrow. I've been seeing some headlines about Sex in the City about like what the plots are and it seems really bad. I mean, are you talking about Miranda and Che? No, I'm talking about one I saw a headline like in the most recent episode like Carrie. Oh, then don't say it. Don't say it. No, no, no. It's not a spoiler. It's just like a storyline. Carrie's like grappling with being called ma'am. You're kidding. <laughs> but I also did see, and I don't know if you've seen this yet, and maybe it's a spoiler for you, but I'm I'm just So don't say it. Just please let me say it because no, literally it's literally don't it's say really it. Really relevant. Tomorrow. It's you really say relevant. It literally tomorrow you could say okay, it. Okay. Could I You're but, always getting on my ass about spoilers. Always. Okay, I'm gonna just tease it and let me know if you've seen this. That Miranda okay. starts reading a book. Quit Like a Woman, yes, and that's the book you were literally just talking about. Yes, Okay, yes. okay, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, Miranda is, spoiler alert, well, that was having my... a, having, I've already seen it, okay. having a problem with drinking. Yeah, and this book, Quit Like a Woman, we were talking about on the podcast because I added it to my want to read shelf because it's called, like, The Radical Choice to Stop Drinking in a Culture Obsessed with Alcohol. And I literally got an email to my email because Jackie's the only person I follow on Goodreads that Jackie wants to read this book and I'm like girl are you okay (laughs) it still looks really good and I probably am gonna read it just when I'm pregnant like it's not like a radical choice to stop drinking a choice and you're pregnant there's nothing radical there's There's nothing nothing radical radical about it it. also speaking of books really quickly I just want to congratulate the redheads because we hit 50,000 Instagram followers I saw and I just think that's like the biggest deal I think so too and it's just such a special, amazing community. We absolutely love doing the podcast. We love the books. And like, uh, you know, to commit to a podcast is a big deal in itself. But to commit to a podcast that also requires you to read a book is like a lot of homework. So just to 100%. know that the community is out there is strong and that you guys are loving what we're doing and we're loving doing it. It just, it felt really good. You know, you put that screenshot on your Instagram and I'm like, oh my God, that looks like Reese. Like, it looks like a real book club. I know. And my goal for Redheads, like I'm just going to manifest something if Say I it. may. Is like not, I mean, obviously this will never happen like everywhere, but like in, and if you own like a local bookstore, hit me up, but like to have like a redheads table in the bookstore where it's like, these are the redheads choices. You know, like Reese you know has what? that, Oprah you know has we that. Done? What? You know what we should have done? Because not to like take your promotion and turn it into mine, but my paperback book does come out next week, available for pre-order on Amazon. And I'm doing a live event with Bar- Barnes and Noble. Get your tickets. You get a signed book with your $25 ticket. Um, and this new printed paperback has New York Times bestseller on it, which I was like really proud of. And we should have put on the back a redhead's choice. Like how dumb are we? Oh yeah, we could have put that like circle. That would have been like the first the first one. We're so dumb. That would be so cute. Yeah, that's like that's big tings dreams. But um, Barnes and Noble tings to have like a table that says like the redhead's choices with all of the books that we've chosen that are available in that's store. That's really cute. I like that. That's like, a good goal. Yeah, even if it happens at just like one local bookstore, if you, you know, are just working the front desk and you want to, you know, get a folding table and take some initiative to get a folding table, organize the books, take a picture and put them away. We'll make a graphic, we'll make a graphic for you. A <laughs> hundred per- one to put, to put, percent. we need a button now when we're back in studio, like how we have all of our sound buttons, we need to add a sound button whenever we're like agreeing with one another hardcore. One hundred percent. Don't let them forget. Go. Hard till the end, cause you know that we are. <laughs> so good. So, so good. Okay, so those are all of my updates for today. Mazel Tov on 50K. It's a really big deal. And you're just well on your way to becoming, like, Reese O. Reese O. A girl can dream. Yeah, she can. So, I guess without further ado, do, 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 it is time for the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> And today's episode is brought to you by Spritz Society. At this point, if you're a toaster and you haven't tried Spritz yet, you are not living. Spritz Society is the most premium, the most delicious sparkling cocktail you'll ever have. As you guys know, it is our family business. You guys have been loving it. We've been loving it. It's going to be in store soon. It's all available to order online direct to your house. Um, It's made with real ingredients, real wine, real flavors, and it comes in four fabulous flavors. So the wine is 100% real. It is super premium white wine harvested from California grapes, and there's over a bottle of wine in every four pack of spritz. The flavors are made with real fruit flavors. So that's real grapefruit, real pineapple, real blood orange, and lemon. And the ingredients, there are only a max of six ingredients in every can of spritz. That's wine, carbonated water, cane sugar, citric acid, natural flavors, and the actual fruit itself. I don't know how many canned cocktails 
cocktails you could say that about. Six ingredients and you could pronounce every single one of them. It's 6% ABV, tastes delicious. So, you know, it'll get you where you need to go with that 6%. You can order today, start making moments with spritz, and you can buy one pack. You can buy a variety pack, which is where you can try each of the flavors, or you can scribe, subscribe every month to make sure that your fridge is always fully stocked. Head over to spritzsociety.com. That's S-P-R-I-T-Z society.com. Order today, and of course, use code TOAST for 10% off your order. Life is too short for drinks you don't love, so choose to drink spritz. Damn straight. Damn straight. And today's episode is also brought to you by Sunbasket. Who's ready to feel amazing this year? I mean, I'm on my my roids. I'm already feeling amazing. And thanks to Sunbasket, who delivers healthy meals, you aren't on the hook to shop and cook to hit your own health goals. And it turns out you're probably much better at eating fancy food than you are at cooking it. And that has never been more true for someone like me who didn't realize her oven in her apartment didn't work for the first two years that she lived here. Sunbasket delivers the joy of eating with bold flavor, flavors, organic produce, and sustainable seafood and meats. Their award-winning chefs are constantly innovating with new recipes and global tastes to keep it interesting each week with dozens of options. Sunbasket's fresh and ready meals are a perfect hot lunch hack. Heat and eat in minutes. So... That works for me in particular because I'm a gal on the go. They've got healthy snacks, grab-and-go breakfast items for busy mornings. Whether you eat vegetarian, paleo, gluten-free, low-carb, high-protein, whatever it is, Sun Basket has something to check any and every box. You can choose from recipes like pan-seared salmon, honey balsamic glazed chicken, chipotle, chipotle barbecue tofu salad. Jackie, you're a vegetarian queen. You could set up weekly delivery. You can skip weeks when you need to. It's simple and easy and you will love it. Your family will love it. You'll love it at work when it's just like not the day for you to run out and get a salad. Trust and believe Sun Basket will make your life so much easier. And they're also offering $90 off and a free gift when you order. When you go to sunbasket.com slash toast and enter the promo code toast at checkout. That's sunbasket.com slash toast. Promo code toast. Thank you, Claudia. Our first story, a little royal news. Queen Elizabeth is facing a hard choice in the Prince Harry security debate. She won't go against the government, a royal expert says. So, Wait, say that again? Prince Harry is in a debate with the British government because they will not provide security, security. for him when he comes to the UK. Well, he's not a royal. Right. Queenie Vibe is trying to stay out of it, but she's in a tricky spot, according to Us Weekly. Um... And they're coming for what? Prince Philip's memorial, right? Yes. TBD, if they're coming, I think it's like based on the security question. So can they bring their own security? Yeah. They have the means. Yeah, no, they want free government funded security. Oh, girl, come on. Like, come on. No, no, no. I mean. You're not royal. Like, that's literally when you decided to take a step back, which was totally the right decision for you and your family. That's exactly what you gave up. Like, and you were able to then go to America, make more money than you probably would have ever made as a royal and be able to afford your own security. I'm sorry. I'm siding with the government on this one. And that's something you will never hear me say. No, I agree. They gave up so many of the, um, of like the burdens of being royal. And they also gave up some of the privileges. And that's just how it is. You can't just like not want to do the unfabulous things and then also want free security. So a royal expert. percent A royal expert, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Exclusively told. (laughs) No, Kristen Contino. But this sounds, you know, True. Legit. Exclusively told Us Weekly that it's hard for the queen as a grandmother to not really be able to intervene. She's not going to go up against the government and say, well, you know, you need to give him security because right now the Metropolitan Police are saying they've conducted a review and concluded that the threat is considered low to him. This makes it one of those situations where the queen is always going to choose being the monarch at the end of the day. Right. Over being a grandmother. Over being gran. Which I think... Hmm. Makes sense. I mean, I'm sure she's come up against the... I mean, we see it in The Crown all the time. Like, Margaret wants to marry this person. The government says she can't. Like, Queenie has to go with the government. Like, she is the head of government, technically. And you know what? It's not like the government's decision is wrong. I think, like, if she were asked what she agreed with, she would agree with the government. Like, they're not being unreasonable. You're not royal anymore. Right, but I'm sure also a part of her just wants Harry and Meghan to, to like, come come and be in the fold and, like, be Mm -hmm. happy with the family. Well, to be honest, it's, like, low-key annoying of them just, like, if they want to come, like, and it sounds like they do because they're wanting security, like, they want to come, it would be, uh, you know, a step in the right direction with, I know him and his brother aren't speaking, like, just pay for the security. Like, to them, how much could it be out of their millions and millions of dollars? Like, what, a couple hundred grand? Yeah. 
I agree. Just pay for the security. Just pay for it if you really do want to go. Unless this is like, you know, well, we were coming, but then we wouldn't get security. So it's like they looked like they wanted to come, but they didn't actually want to come, which is something I would do. Like, could be that. Oh, you can't send me, you can't send me a private jet. I guess I'm not coming. Also, they could like just stick close to the family and, you know, piggyback off of their security. Yeah. But then they have to be like close with the family and there's a lot of drama still. You know what's so interesting is like, and I learned this during the Oprah interview too, and it seems to be ringing true, is like so much of these like issues within the royal family have to do, especially when it comes to Harry and Meghan, have to do with security. Like what? Like when they were talking to Oprah, it was just so many of the issues were like, well, we didn't feel safe because we didn't have security. It's like security is such a big part of the family dynamic, weirdly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a big part of their lives in general. Yeah. Um, but I'm sorry, Harry and Meghan are wrong for this one. Unless they just don't want to go, which I totally understand. Too. That I could see happening, but I do hope that they go because... Same. I'm ready for a if, if they're sincere, a reconciliation. If they're sincere about, like, you know, reconciling with the family. And if they're not, just stop talking about them then. Right, no. And, and that's so fine I'm too. I'm so here for a reconciliation. I'm, me as well. Like, families are meant to stick together through thick and thin. Yes. So we'll see what happens there. Are when you, is the memorial? I don't know. Up mm. soon, probably. Are you ready for our next story? I am. Yes, ma'am. Lena Dunham wants to make an older, wiser version of girls. Which Enough. We've been through enough with you, Lena. Stop. Nobody asked for. HBO's Sex and the City-inspired series Girls went off the air in 2017, and writer star Lena Dunham is already open to reviving it. The 35-year-old discussed the major possibility of rebooting the show with The Hollywood Reporter. She said, I look back, and just like the sheer gall of me stepping onto that first day, 24-year-old me landing in, standing in Silver Cup Studios, the old Sex and the City studios, she um, is saying, let's do this, and that the recent Sex and the City revival could pave the way for girls to return to the small oh my screen. God, please no. I'm telling you, girls could never return to the small screen for one reason, and that's because Lena Dunham, like, overnight went from being, like, the most beloved belle of Hollywood to being the most hated woman in America. And I'm not sure if it's because of that really weird shit she wrote in her book or that article she wrote. Who said it? My Jewish boyfriend or my dog? Um, no, I, I think it was just us that were upset about that. Yeah, no, totally. But, like, <laughs> the world went from thinking Lena Dunham was the greatest feminist who ever lived to literally thinking, like, she was an evil monster. So I think it would be an enormous mistake for HBO to – and, like, when you go back and watch that show, like, I know I watched it, and, like, I was living for it at the time. But if I were to go back and watch that show, I would be like, what the fuck am I watching? It low-key wasn't good. I mean, it had good moments – that I think really captured people. But overall, yeah, it was like so insane. Yeah. And it got more insane as the seasons went on. Right, because it was supposed to be like this actual realistic version. Like in Sex and the City, they all had their own apartments. Like it was a real, you know, accurate retelling of what it's like to be like a post-grad millennial living in New York after you just left college and like your parents cut you off. And for that, I think that's what got a lot of people connected to the show because – they were all living the same reality. And then slowly but surely, like, that grip on reality they had just completely went away. Completely. So, yeah. I don't and think th- th- there's a, t- a need for this, a time for it, a want, a desire. I think, and I think, like, Lena Dunham, if she wants to come back to the small screen, like, give us something fresh and new and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, or not. Or not, of course, or not. It's always good to just, like, stay home. I love to stay home. <laughs> And but a girl with no job. I think girls were good on girls. I'm all set. Thank you so much. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? It's a little Ben news, a little exciting news for Ben. A new oh, emo. I thought, said, I thought you were saying Ben is in the news. No, yeah, I know it's that's what it sounded like. Sorry, I just can't read this story without thinking about Ben. Because what is my new- crazy husband getting into now? Nothing. A new emo festival is reuniting oh, yeah. all of your favorite acts. It's called When We Were Young. It's taking the internet by storm. It's going down with some of the most iconic acts in emo and pump pop punk music of the last two decades, including My Chemical Romance, Paramore, Dashboard Confessional, Jimmy World, Bright Eyes, Take Back Sunday, The Used, Alkaline Trio, and AFI, to name a few expected to appear Ever at, Levine. The, at the one-day-only showcase at the LA Festival Grounds in Nevada on October 22nd. So there has been, like, two major reactions to this story. The first was, like, holy shit. Like, all the emos that I follow, like, Ben, Jack Vanek, Aaron Gilfoy, like, mm-hmm. they are quaking. They can't believe. Let it up. 
And I was very much there too because I saw boys like girls on the lineup. And like, I don't know if you know this about me, but like much of my middle school years were defined by that one album from Boys Like Girls. Like, And if I listened to it right now, I'd probably know all the words. Like it's so good. Like I spent a whole summer listening to that album. So I was really excited. And of course, Ben was excited. So he was like, can we go? And I was like, I mean, we could say we will, but we know we won't. Then the second reaction is people are like, how are every single one of these acts going to perform on a one day festival this is fire festival this is astro world like people are doubting majorly because i've never seen a lineup that big for a one-day festival huh i didn't even think about that the bandwidth and also or you know even say it's not fire festival but it means that like you have to choose between some of your favorite acts if they're going on simultaneously also i'm seeing here that we the kings is Mm -hmm. performing which is just so exciting 3-O-H-3 do you remember oh three of course so okay that I hadn't even thought about that I do feel like this is too much for one day but I also feel like Vegas has a lot of the um it's not fire festival Space. because they have the infrastructure in place I to agree. handle like mass amounts of people but if I'm Ben like I'm excited and I'm overwhelmed nervous yeah so like it's true like do you have to miss Paramore to see Avril Lavigne like how does it work how does it work I feel like you guys should go well, this was also a big week for the emo community because Paramore announced that, like they're back in the studio making music and they haven't made music in years. Um, so that was, it was just like a good time to be an emo kid. Like I would go, but I do feel overwhelmed. Like I can't lie. Well, then Ben should go because this is like the I feel peak like I would need a whole spreadsheet. Like I would need a crazy ass spreadsheet with a map and color coordinated tabs to figure out where to go, what time to wake up, who to miss, who to see. Like. I'm tired. No, but usually these festivals like have apps that give you exactly that where you like build your schedule. Yeah. You say like who you want to go see and they put it on a schedule for you and with like what uh, stage it's at. And there's usually a map. If it's a well done festival, there's usually an app. Well, this is backed by Live Nation, but so is Astroworld. So you really never know. And and I think it's something in the culture because I'm feeling it too. Like I'm just generally now skeptical of festivals, especially new ones. Yeah, I I think that's fair to say. I think Fire Festival definitely, you know, put that fear in everyone of and Astro World. Yeah, but for different reasons, for different reasons. Yeah, like no, Fire Festival before Fire reasons. Safety be- before Fire Festival. No, it was like never even thought that like you could buy tickets to a festival that's being put on and, and get it, like, duped, and it just like doesn't happen, and it's just like sandwiches in a tent on a beach. Yeah, you were bamboozled. Yeah, so. They, they're different but still eventually it becomes an issue of safety but for different reasons yeah that's true say. are you ready for our next story some exciting news only if it's the exciting news that's brought to you by single drunk female mm. is it yeah. yeah 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 oh my god thank god okay <laughs> samantha fink is a person in progress and being a person is hard single <laughs> drunk female is a new free form original series coming to hulu this january it's from the executive producer of girls and the executive producer of russian doll samantha used to get drunk all the time but now she's getting clean and that's gonna get real messy fresh out of rehab samantha is forced to move back home and live with mom who she affectionately calls her smother she's working at her local grocery store taking naps in the cereal aisle and going to meetings sam sobriety one day at a time but the days just keep on coming with her former drinking buddy and newly found friends of the program by her side sam is trying to make the most of her second chance a chance to start over a chance to be a slightly better person a chance at love because when you start at rock bottom the only way to go is up check out the new dramedy that is sure to make you laugh even if sometimes it's just to keep you from crying single drunk female series premieres thursday january 20th on freeform and it's streaming on hulu so that is today you guys don't miss it Thank you, Claudia. And our next story is some really exciting relationship news from one of our favorite people, Lady Mary Crawley. Michelle Dockery, the actress who plays Lady Mary, is engaged to To Phoebe Waller-Bridge's brother, Jasper. What? Yep, they've been together since 2019, and news of their nuptials was announced in The Times this week, and they are engaged. That is so cute. So cute. I I feel like I never see people. Is he British? Yeah, I I mean I don't actually I don't know because I don't know Phoebe I don't think Waller Phoebe Bridge. Is. I don't know her. Wait, Phoebe Waller Bridge. I oh that's not Phoebe Bridgers. Don't ask me questions. Phoebe Waller Bridge. Okay, it's from uh the show on Amazon. Fleabag. Fl- about a bug. Yeah, Fleabag, and she is British, and so her brother is definitely British, and that is actually cute. I thought I was thinking of Phoebe Bridgers, the singer. 
Yep, don't know either of them. I'm so sorry to report. That's like honestly like Phoebe Bridgers is like a Gen Z thing and I only really figured her out because I'm on TikTok. Okay, good. I'm glad that someone has a, a brief knowledge. But we never see people from Downton in the news. They're so never. to themselves. They're and British. Like they, they're just like quiet. Yeah, and I'm just so happy for Lady Mary. I really never thought about like her personal life. I remember after I watched Downton the first time, I went to her Instagram and saw that she's like so high fashion and just like a darling of like being. Is she? Yeah, she's like super serious. Like the way that she dresses or like it's styled for magazine shoots or red carpets. She's like very um, fashion girly. What's her real name? Michelle Dockery. I was going to search Mary Crawley. (laughs) Um, I'm going to follow her. Like, that sounds like a a delicious person to follow. Her picture, she gives me um, Kristen Stewart vibes. Yeah. Like, similar seriousness. So, now she's engaged. Also, I found out the craziest thing yesterday about, you know, like, it's on the same level of Tom Wamsgam's playing... Yeah. Mr. Darcy. Uh Uh-huh. The woman from Ted, Rebecca, the one who's a singer. Wait, hold on. The singer from Ted? From Ted Ted Lasso. Sorry. Ted Lasso. Oh. Oh, Hannah. Hannah. Yeah. Rebecca on Ted Lasso. You know her because she sings sometimes. Yeah. She is also the same woman who played the shame woman in Game of Thrones. You're lying. Like the nun? The nun who was like walking down the street with Cersei. Throwing duty. Shame. Shame. Wow. That is actually life-changing information. <laughs> it was shocking. That woman was so evil. Life-changing She's a good actress. information. How she could be shame and also like you were telling me Ted Lasso's like this great, funny, lighthearted show. Like that's shocking. Shocking, shocking stuff. Shocking. Yeah. So I just thought everyone needed to know that. I don't know if everyone already put that together and I was just not watching Ted Lasso when everyone figured it out. Probably. But it was it was a shocking moment for me. There are a few moments like that that like you learn things that like people already knew and it like changes your life. Like when I found out that Brexit was a conjunction of British <laughs> exit, I swear to God, I <laughs> lost my mind. Yeah, no, it's like we're always pushing for stuff like that to happen, like for people to join words together and just like call it and what there it, it was and there it was happening all around you that was also like when I found out that the word Martian is like for people who live on Mars like residents of Mars which obviously like would be but I just thought it was like all extraterrestrial yeah I'm just gonna wipe this out to all Marvin the Martian literally <laughs> wait that's a great segue into our fifth and final story which is a little is space- it about clueless no it's space oh. news okay space news that like I want to be you know on the frontier of the future of space travel. Like, I want to be into this, but this seems unnecessary. Let me know what you think. Okay. A new film studio will build will be built oh. in space by 2024. <laughs> Variety. This is from well, Variety. Well, is it to put together, like, Oscar contenders or, like, films of, like, we get to see what's happening on Mars? I don't know. Are I feel like it's, like... Sandra Bullock up there? Yeah, no, like, uh... I don't know if it's going to be, like, a hub where they shoot space movies... Here's the I feel like Here's I Jackie, it has to be it has to be a studio where they like capture footage of what's going on so they can study it not to make like you know country strong in space well, listen to the deets and then you okay. can let me know what you think okay. space entertainment S- enterprise s-e-e the company co-producing tom cruise's upcoming space movie plan to launch a sports arena and a production studio in zero gravity S.E.E. has unveiled plans to build a space station module that contains a sports and entertainment arena. Who are they filling it with? Martians? As no, well this as literally a, has Scientology written all over it. As well as a content studio by December 2024. A podcast studio? Named S.E.E. One, the module is intended to host films, television, music, and sports events, as well as artists, producers, and creatives who want to make content in the low-orbit microgravity environment. The facilities will enable development, production, recording, broadcasting, and live streaming of content. Live we could do the toast well, we from the space. toast. I thought okay. this was a dumb idea until now. I we're that. talking. No, I mean, talk about like such unnecessary money being spent. Like, this is so unnecessary. I, and or if it's necessary, someone please explain to me like what this is going to do for society. It's like, do you want to go record our podcast today, like at the studio down the street or the one downtown or the one, or in, space. The one in space? Like, what is the difference? Is the audio and, better? And to be honest, I well, don't Claudia, think there's no ambulances in space. That's true. <laughs> there's no but construction. I just, 
I just don't think like we are at the level of space, like education and knowledge for this. Like this seems like something we might do in a hundred years, you know? Yeah, not by 2024. And I also just feel like things aren't really like, I wouldn't say perfect on earth. On the ground. That we need to now be taking our talents to space. Well, you know what? If it means getting away from all this nonsense going on around me, like maybe it's not such a bad idea. You could use some space. Yeah. <laughs> I could use some space. Yeah. So let us know if um, we're being hard on, you know, the future. Maybe, we're not. And we're, we're not. And if we're being like anti-future. No, we are not. Like we are forward thinking like queens. We fully embrace the new. But this is dumb. Yeah, dumb, unnecessary, nobody asked for it. There's enough studios producing enough content that nobody wants to see right here on Earth. Right here at the Morning Toast. <laughs> no, people want to see it. 100%. In 1080p. You guys, we got 1080p yesterday. Wasn't it Jack, so... tell us how you did it. I've been following your uh, like journey to get our videos from home in 1080p, but I haven't asked you how you are doing that. So it took a few days because first I, we were recording in 1080p then I didn't realize I have to also export in 1080p and then export yes. again and keep exporting in 1080p I just thought because the files were in 1080p eventually it would just be 1080p so at every step along the way I ensured we were in 1080p. Does it take longer? It took longer but the quality was chef's kiss so uh also if you're watching on YouTube make sure that when you're watching our video you're you just press the little settings and make sure you're watching in high quality picture not like the automatic it, automatically we'll put it in like 320 yeah so we're evolving every day here at the new interface and soon we're going to space cool can't wait i'm ready i would do the first podcast from space of course but if they would give it to like joe rogan but it should be given to us oh so no funny. it should be given to joe rogan because he's like obsessed with extraterrestrial like yeah he's really big oh. into like ufos and I think he would appreciate it more than And he us. had Elon on his podcast, so, like, he has access. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, like, they already offered. He, I'm sure if he wanted to go to space tomorrow and podcast, he could. He has all the I wonder if his Spotify contract will let him do it. Yeah. But um, he's, like, really into all that stuff, so he deserves it more than us because I watched that. Uh, what was that documentary we watched that Ben made us watch about aliens? Yeah. Uh, Paranormal? Yes. And it was fine, but it didn't, like change my life yeah I actually like hate space and I don't care and like so and maybe, alien activity maybe the best ones. how do you feel about alien activity sorry that's what I meant I think like er, er, space exploration is important and what NASA's doing is great but like these people who are like area 51 aliens like extra dress don't care got it it's possible I'm not saying I don't believe but like I have my own problems like I don't need to worry about other creatures on other planets like I have enough going on very fair now let's get into the TV recap. We have so much to recap. Okay, so the TV recap is brought to you by Away Suitcases, which is one of our favorite brands of all time. And I just got back from Mexico with all of my Away products. Away is a modern lifestyle brand that creates thoughtful products for every traveler for every kind of trip. They started with the perfect suitcase, which we both have multiple ones. Multiple. Um, they're crafted with features that make travel way more seamless. And now when travel looks so much more different than ever before, you can always count on Away's range of suitcases, bags, and accessories wherever you take your next trip. Whether you're just going to the corner store, a weekend away, an extended stay with friends or family, we're all navigating the current reality of travel, but no matter your destination or your style, the Away suitcases, bags, and accessories all come in a variety of colors, sizes, materials to suit your needs and inspire your future travels. So if you are a queen who hates checking bags, you have to get the standard Away bag. It is the biggest, most perfect size bag to fit into the overhead bin space mm -hmm. and you'll get the most storage inside your bag so that's just basics then basics. I graduated and I got the big one for like big checked abroad trips and I've never had more crap put in a bag in my life and the away they just think of everything like each bag comes with its own matching laundry bag so like remember how we're always talking about like what to do with your dirty undies when you go on trips away has thought of that maybe they were listening to the morning toast because they give you a laundry bag and give you like this little sponge it's almost like a magic eraser that you can use on the outside of your bag if like tsa scuffs it up which they do and all the little scratches come right out they do yeah they do yeah they also have a tsa approved combination lock to keep all your belongings safe and the lock is right on the bag it's not like an external lock that you're obviously going to lose right also um, they have a size because i always figure like if i'm not if i'm 
checking luggage, I'm going to bring the biggest suitcase I have. But sometimes like you don't need all that space. Their medium size is actually the perfect size for when you need more than a checked uh, than a overhead bin bag but you don't need to bring a bag that's going to last you two weeks super easy to roll through the airport with the 360 degree spinner wheels really smooth the all the products from away are designed to last a lifetime and so if any part of your suitcase breaks their standout customer service team will arrange to have it fixed or replaced there's an 100 day trial on everything that they make so you can take it out on the road live with it travel with it get lost with it and if you decide it's not for you you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund during that period and they offer free shippings and returns within the U.S., U.K., Europe, and Canada. So start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases, at awaytravel.com slash toast. That's awaytravel.com slash toast. Great. Okay, Real Housewives. What should we of, recap first? Real Housewives of Orange County, because the rest is, you know, um, evergreen. Okay, so uh, and this will I want to say. This should be short, because nothing fucking okay. happened. So this trip looks like nice, but really torturous. Like, I'm I'm not trying to be a brat, but like this house isn't that nice. And everyone's like, I just expected more from Heather. Oh, I thought the house was so nice. I, I really like how everybody has um, space and privacy. I feel like that's really conducive to like just good mental health on a trip. Like for me personally, 100%. as opposed to just like being up each other's asses and like not having a moment of reprieve, especially while you're filming a TV show. So I thought the house setup was actually really great. I mean, all the pools, like how fun does that look? But the, I don't know, this decor was just, and it's like an indoor outdoor house and it's 95 degrees and there's like nowhere to escape. All the windows are like open and there's no doors. The heat is a lot. What month no, is it? I, I don't know. I was like, when I was loosely trying to figure it out, but I didn't put any. I didn't like do any research. So when Heather had the girls sit down and she was showing them her architecture blueprints, I was like, oh my god, this bitch is so obnoxious. But then when she said, like, basically she had her kids late in life and she really wants to be able to leave her kids a place that they can all be with their kids. And then she was talking about her dream. Like, I actually thought that was really sweet. I thought it was sweet too. Like, that's Heather though for you because it's like she's yeah. not just like a braggadocious ice queen. Like she really like she is warm. Emo. And emo. And it's true. Like her and Terry have like built you know this life and they have all of this money and it's like that's really a really nice goal of something that you want to do with all of the money that you have agreed so I I thought it was interesting I was wondering if we were going to get to go to the um see the houses which would have been obnoxious like if she brought the girls for that but if it was a solo endeavor I wouldn't have mind seeing it so Shannon was like actually not bothering me that much this trip like I do feel like she's her the best version of herself like when she's drunk and on vacation and so she was being funny and like I like how her and Emily are like hanging out but like they both obviously hate each other you know yeah no Shannon is staying low-key under the radar because she you know she girl boss too close close to the sun Mm -hmm. Heather burned her and now Mm -hmm. she has to retreat a little bit she needs to like get more ammunition she needs to refuel the troops need to be fed they need fresh socks and then she's gonna come back in with her next bout of bullshit but right now she's just in like retreat mode which I think is is nice is nice yeah but she's kind of like irrelevant to the current storyline because she's waiting for her next storyline because the last one didn't go so well do you think it's kind of dramatic of Nicole to not go on the trip because of Noella? It makes me feel like there's something more going on between them because as far as we know, like, they're just, like, having a weirdness in their friendship. Like, Nicole hung up on Noella, but, like, they haven't, like, gone into, like, a f- blowout. So it just seems like a really dramatic thing to do. Yeah, and it makes me feel like that's not the only reason because I also feel like if Heather knew that Nicole, it's, like, Nicole or Noella, come. then she would say to Gina, no, I'm not inviting Noella because then Nicole can't come and Nicole is my friend. So, But, th- but you know what? Heather might not have had a choice because Noella's a full-time castmate and Nicole is not. Right. I was just going to say that, too. So it's, like, Nicole's presence is optional um I would have liked to see her there because I think I like her so far and yeah me too even though everyone's like now saying she's like Heather's um henchman she is but I don't mind it yeah no someone's someone's got to do the work someone's got to do it yeah um also I just want to like give a major shout out sorry I feel like I'm writing really hard this episode and just like talking a lot and really fast but I'm on roids, so just let me be. Um, (laughs) This episode for me was just like another testament to why long ago I made the decision to stan Emily Simpson. First of all, she's so funny. And like she's so different than she was like her first season. She's opened up so much more. 
And she's just like great. And she looks amazing in a bathing suit. I've never seen anyone like look like a like so good in a one piece. And I just love her. And for me, I just was like cemented in my stanitude for Emily after this episode. But I, I say that after every episode. Yeah, you do. I really love her as well. I really like Gina too. I think she just has a Same. good uh, energy. Energy. Just a good take on things generally speaking. I mean I wish she didn't go so hard for Noella but someone had I feel like to. that was like a production thing. Like I don't really think she cares for Noella that much. No and I think that like she likes Noella. Noella's going through a hard time so we're all going to go on this trip without her. Like this is Noella's new job. Like she should just come. Whatever. Can we talk about the passport? Because you're telling me like you are so fancy. You have your own jet and you don't know that to go to Mexico you need a passport. And by the way, flying private means nothing. You still need a passport. So like, like she do. was saying that when she flew private, she could use her passport card. I don't think that's true. Like I literally was just in Mexico. I mean, I hope it's true. Otherwise, what the fuck was she, she talking sounds about? So dumb. I'm telling you, I don't think it's true. Someone who works in customs, like let us know. I don't think that's true. No, it's just she, like basics. The one thing you need to fly is a passport. She's incredibly deranged insane she's insane when she showed up at the house after missing her flight and is like this is disgusting nobody's here to greet me like you missed your flight yeah no you missed your flight you didn't come with the girls like they didn't even know you what time you're arriving and then you arrive and you're like a real hostess would be there when I got there it's and like you only told Shannon so she needs to sit around all day and wait for you to come she doesn't even want you on the trip and she and needs to miss dinner she just like walks around the house talking to herself like she, she thinks is, she's so funny like she's not she really does like think that she's doing something and the thing is like she's so stunning Beautiful. Beautiful. And the outfits are sickening. And the she hair. just like comes off the plane in like the perfect plane Stunning. outfit. Then she's ready for dinner like in the like. And I thought some of the other ladies looks like they looked like they were all going to different places. Heather and, looked amazing though. Um, She she did look amazing. But it's it didn't wasn't giving me like a uh, beach Mexican. in Mexico yeah. vibe. It was just like yeah. a nice outfit for a night out in like New York City in the summer. There was no like bright colors. Yeah, I see you. Right. So they were all were all over the place. Noella understood the assignment like shows up. So it's hard. I feel like it might be hard for some people to see when this woman is so fabulous on the outside that like her behavior if, if she was anyone else like the behavior is insane. Well, she acted like a nut at dinner like with like <laughs> Well, I don't care that Heather, like, Gina had the best thing. Like, if you're not going to eat, just, like, be cool about it. Like, like, pretend. Like, not making your topic of conversation being the fact that, like, you didn't eat your octopus. She was just being so annoying with the tequila shot and, like, being so rude, like, pouring out the drink when the guy was like, can I bring you some ice? Like, it's a tequila shot. It's gross. Just drink it. Like. Yeah. No, it was a lot. And I feel like it's hard to, I mean, watching the episode, it's like, yeah, this doesn't seem like a fun dinner anymore. But I feel like the energy if you were there is like even worse than what we were able to understand from watching on TV. Like she, I think she just like came in, sucked out all the Hot. oxygen from the room, like made, I think they were having a good time before and like vibing. And as a viewer, it's just like, Oh, she didn't eat her food. And she's like complaining about her shot. Like what's the big deal. But I think yeah. she's just like someone who just like sucks all the energy out of her room. The minute she arrives. Yeah, because this group is, like, actually pretty good together. Like, Jen is growing on me. They're all vibing in, like, a nice way. Like, I actually think Jen is really similar to Heather in, like, their very calm, sometimes boring vibes. So they really connect. But then Heather can also be, be really fun, and that's why she connects with Gina and Emily. Like, I think that the group is, like, near perfect without Noella. There's, she just, like, doesn't fit in, especially because it's Heather's trip, Heather's everything, and they're at odds. Yeah, and she, like, doesn't understand why that matters, that her and Heather are at odds and, like, right. It She's just, like, coming in out of nowhere. So we also got a really good trailer, mid-season trailer, for what's coming up. Like, this trip to Aspen looks moronic. Uh, Dr. Jen's husband, Ryan, leaves her? Yeah. Now when I saw that, then it makes all the last few episodes, like, make sense where she's, like, always complaining about Ryan. I just thought they were, wrong. Like, like, one of them has to work. And then he's, like, mean that she's not home. So you go to work, bitch. What do you think? This house on the beach is going to pay for itself? No, I don't know what I'm going to see in the next few episodes. But I just know I'm not going to be Team Ryan. No, Jen has her head on straight. Like, she definitely has mom guilt. But, like, she has to work. Like, what are we supposed to do? Just not work? That's not how the world works. Yeah. Yeah. So he was pissing me off. And now that I know he's like leaving, I'm fully on board, like hating him. Yeah. And I think that it will raise Jen's stock because when her family scenes were like making me not like her because like her husband but and now no I, shirt now and the know. dog now in his know. armpit all the time, yeah. like yeah, leave yeah, us yeah. alone. But Ryan, if, Ryan. If it's Jen on her own, I'm, we're good. No, and now I know why we've seen, like, so many weird scenes of her and her family. Like, they were giving us some context. Oh, my God, Bruno looks so cute sleeping behind you. Yeah, no, he's sleeping on heating pad. Boop, 
He does this every day while I record, but you couldn't. But he's usually not in frame. You moved back today. I did. I moved back today because like my big fat face was just taking up the YouTube screen. Girl, and preach, I actually preach, got, preach, I preach. got um, an email from YouTube and they were like, your face is too big and too close and you've got to move two, back. They said, dear the morning shows, you two hookers are so ugly and not funny. Get the fuck <laughs> off our platform. We don't want to deal with your bullshit anymore. But if you can't stop yourselves, the least you can do is scoop back. Is move back. (laughs) And give us more brew. Have a good day. Literally. That's what they Um, said to me. Oh, wait. You know what? I think Theo's done with his grooming. Should I go grab him or just like put him outside? No, it's okay. I'll see him later. No, don't get him. I think maybe for tomorrow's Friday episode, we'll bring the boys. uh, Okay. Okay. We'll bring in the boys. We them boys. We making noise. Speaking of cheers. Speaking of making noise. <laughs> um, cheer. Okay, I finished. I apologize that it took me like two extra days. But my God, what? Okay, I want to say baseline. I like the show. Like nothing bad against it. I like the beat. I like the beat. But <laughs> we need to talk about how, first of all, the show is so long. The episodes are so long because every single scene is in slow motion. And they like didn't have a lot of content this year. And it felt really stretched out. Like I saw a couple scenes that I had already seen once before. Like they were choppy with their editing. Like it could have been five episodes. But like they just had to like dramatize it so much. And it was just such slow-mo. Like it was just a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. I will say it was cool that they got to bring the cameras to Daytona. Because yes. when you're watching the performances, I felt like I was watching Bring It On. Like the way that they edited those performances. Like last year, they I loved it. They didn't let the crew in and it was just filmed from people's phones. Mm-hmm. And we just had to make do. But like it literally felt like Bring It On. It was so exciting to watch all of the like stunts like close up, far away. Yeah. It was really cool. Well, NCA would be incredibly stupid not to embrace the filming now, seeing as how what the show has done for Cheer. Like, Cheer has always had, like, a big audience, like, like really niche fans. But now it's, like, a worldwide stage, and they would just be dumb not to embrace that. Yeah, and they the cheerleading, like, I don't know how it works over there. The cheerleading Illuminati came, came off pretty bad in the first season. Yes. So I feel like by just, like, letting them in and not, deal, like, not making a stink or anything, like, now I feel like it, they're coming off in a better light and not being so, like... Uh, tyrannical agreed and so major spoiler for anyone who hasn't watched just like turn off now Navarro lost and I was shocked I mean it's funny because TVCC like beat them at their own game like they hired their photographer they copied all of like the attitude like they copied oh what did I say photographer (laughs) that too um (laughs) well they did now they were on the Netflix show (laughs) um so they really like beat them at their own game because TVCC didn't do anything outwardly original they just copied what Navarro did and did it better but I do think we should talk about like why we think Navarro didn't win like because it was a lot of like underlying like plots like is the fame getting to them and I do want to say like I actually don't think it is like I think they all remained relatively humble based on remember those few months after the show like you couldn't get arrested they were so fucking famous so I think based on that they were really not that you know egotistical but I do think and it pains me to say this like Monica going on Dancing with the Stars and missing the first semester, like, and leaving them with Kaylee Peppers, who is a good coach, but who's literally, like, two years out of college. Like, I didn't think that was a good idea. I don't know. At first, when I saw it, I was like, and I was watching this, I was like, at what point does Monica go on Dancing with the Stars? How is this going to work with cheer? And then when she explained that she watches every single season, like, this is, like, her biggest dream. And she's doing everything for the kids all the time. Her whole life is dedicated to these kids. And then, like, I think that she spends so much of her, like, personal time, like, with them, thinking about them. And she, right, she did something for herself. Like, once I realized that, like, that has been a dream of hers her whole life, and this is a show that she's always watched, I was, like, I was so glad that she went. And it was first semester, which is when they're not working on stuff for, um... NCA you know it's just really like getting the team together so definitely they missed some team building stuff and I'm sure it wasn't ideal to be with Kaylee but I also think that you know someone like Ladarius who could have used that as an opportunity to like step up and like show the team how to bond and stuff it was so my thoughts on Ladarius were so conflicting when we first saw him again so there's so many this is such a roller coaster ups downs ups downs but when we first saw everyone after cheer season one drops this is before covid and we're seeing mm-hmm. how everyone is handling the fame and Ladarius comes on and he's like I don't care about the fame like he 
I was like, oh my gosh, Ladarius has just become like this wonderful person. Like all of the amazing attributes about him from the first season, it, it seems like he yeah. saw himself and then he's going to focus on those attributes. So I was like, is Ladarius the MVP? Spoiler alert, the woat. The woat. So I just felt like his attitude the first season, the first semester, like when Monica was gone and in her absence, like really just sunk the team even further. And also you know by the time they do go to NCA in uh, to Daytona in 2021, the fame of it all and the arc of the show's success, like it has completely dropped. dropped. And like now they're in, it feels like a curse. And you know that, like, cheerleading is really superstitious. Jackie, totally. It's, like, this, like, Netflix curse. And it's also just, like, the price of fame in general. And when they first got so famous, like, they could do no wrong. They had every opportunity. And it's, like, only the good. Only the good. And then, like, you really see, even though it takes time, like, uh, what goes up must come down. And yeah. the down, it, it makes me feel like if they could do it all over again, like they wouldn't have done. Maybe some of them would have. Like I think, you know, for Morgan and Gabby, like this is everything. But I, fe- yeah. I honestly, I think for Monica, yes, she's feeling so low for like over a year. Obviously, I'm sure she's happy for the success of her kids, but like her cheerleaders. Yeah. But I think that if she could do it all again, I she would think long and hard. I agree. And, you know, at first when they were, like, cutting to TVCC, I'm like, fuck this. Like, I'm Navarro strong. But then the more we got to know those kids, like, actually, I wouldn't mind having two separate shows. Like, because the weenies, D, like, that, I thought their whole background was so interesting. Like, learning about Jim's, like, Flip City that, like, just started to keep kids out of trouble and then literally ended up sending kids to, like, the Olympics and Worlds. Like, I thought that was so cool. And then Angel, who, like, we didn't even get enough of, but it was apparently, like, the greatest tumbler who ever lived. Like, there was more there and I thought those kids I really liked Jada I thought a lot of them were really interesting but going back and forth between Navarro and TVCC was like conflicting for me emotionally because I like stan Navarro but TVCC and Vante like I was feeling it I was feeling it too I really liked Vante as a coach his approach is really different than Monica's at so many different points throughout the season I was like TVCC is gonna win Navarro's gonna win and when like TVCC hit their first full out like at zero like no mistakes and Navarro's was a cluster I was like oh shit and then when they go to Daytona or no their last full out it's the opposite this keeps happening like in the show and then the first performance at Daytona then TVCC messes up and then in the second one Navarro messes up and it's just like Gabby Oh, no, not Gabby. Jill. Jill. Oh, my God. I love her, though. I felt so bad for her. I can't say it's her fault because I loved her so much. But it is her fault. And I'm just happy for, like, some of the other Navarro girls who were in the background season one who, like, now are getting, like, Instagram followers and stuff. Because, like, that's a really odd dynamic. Like, Netflix came here. They spoke to all of us. They only want some of us. And now we are going to have more followers, more business opportunities than we'll ever know. Like, then. Yeah then one person will ever have in a lifetime and you just have to you know hold my feet fuck off (laughs) yeah no I agree they must be odd I definitely think the the way like the impact that the show had on society made it weird at Navarro for a multitude of reasons I think especially you know early 2020 but by the time like they're ready to compete again I do think some of those dynamics have been ironed out because at that point it's only Gabby who's there and Gabby's always been a celebrity cheerleader yes so like the only yeah no and I think when I started to realize that TVCC was gonna win was like they were highlighting so many of their cheerleaders who were like the best at what they do like we had the three weenies we had Jada we had Angel and then I was thinking I'm like who is the star like we have Gabby and Maddie like that's it yeah yeah I I agree there were times I was like oh TVCC like especially with their tumblers the weenies I was there was no competition but then in the prelims when D one of the weenies like fell I was like well you know what he hasn't had like the best attitude the whole time like he's just so good at what he does he's not like you know smiling oh you know I actually thought that conversation about like straight men in cheerleading was really interesting because you know we're always used to seeing the girls who are like "Ah, yeah and like I've actually never thought to look at the boys and when I looked at Navarro 
you know, you thought of like Ladarius and Jerry and like they're all just very comfortable in their sexuality and like they don't feel weird smiling. But then there's like that, you know, toxic straight vibe where it's like, I'm not going to smile and perform like that's gay. And I thought it was interesting that they spoke about it because I had wondered about it as well. Yeah, it was an interesting take on it. And I wonder if that's something that happens in like just cheerleading in general because like the smiles and the all of the animation. It's cringy. Like, it's, and it's a lot for anyone, let alone someone who's like, completely not into it but Mm -hmm. I think like one of the best arcs of a character like in television history I know what you're gonna say is D like Mm -hmm. being anti-face I guess that's what they call it like giving face that's what I'm calling it then he messes up and he's also like a a, you know head and shoulders above other tumblers so like he has this uh superiority which and and, like he just goes out there he does his thing it, it feels like nothing to him then he messes up and he's like you know has this crisis like and then when he hits it at the second performance and he finally like gives a little something oh my god I had chills and it was in down like my- slow motion yeah and like you you can see like how happy he was to hit it considering the day before he missed it like I literally had full body chills it was like my Agreed. favorite moment ever that and was he also like editing. he did it in his way you know yes he didn't be any he wasn't anyone but himself it was so beautiful I agree. That editing was like, honestly, Golden Globe worthy. Like, they deserve all the awards. No, and obviously that's just like, this is reality. So that's how it happened. But the way that his story wrapped, like, just warmed my heart. And I loved his mom and his brother. Yeah. No, I loved. Like, how the brother, like, went out and figured out all this stuff for his little brother, who he knew was, like, more talented than him. So, like, he went to college and then found out the best place to go and sent his brother there. Like, it was just a gorgeous story. Like, I loved his whole family. Yeah. No, it was it was beautiful. And so... I. People, I don't know where most people like landed on who they wanted to win Daytona. I didn't have a horse in the race. I felt like both teams deserved it. And whoever, you know, stuck it best deserved to win. But it did seem clear that the judges wanted TVCC to win. And maybe that was just like an F you to Navarro for like putting such a spotlight on our sport and making us look like the tyrants that we are. Pretty much the whole time I wanted Navarro to win until we met the weenies. And then when it got down to like the last couple full outs and the actual competition, like I thought TVCC's routine was better. Like, it was. It was hard for me to tell because of all the cutting and pasting and stuff. You know? Um, So all in all, like, it was really good, but it was really long. It was really long, but it was something to be a part of, you know? And we waited so long. I wish they would have put it out, like, as it was happening because it was, like, the first few episodes, it's like, we know what's about to happen. This is not fun. That's true. You know? Maybe like four here, four there. But it was interesting to see like all the like different like college, like how it's affected college life, COVID. Yes. So. Like even them having a virtual award ceremony, like that sucked. I know, but I was happy for Navarro that they didn't have to cry in public. It would have been so embarrassing. It like sucks for the the winners, but it's like very nice for the losers. You're saving face for the losers. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I watched yesterday was Euphoria, which was like kind of a boring episode. I don't know if that's a hot take, but just like a lot happened on the season premiere. And this was episode two. And we were just like, like catching up. And a lot of it was like fantasy. Like, imagine if this happened. But I do want to say, like, I don't, I know you can't answer this question for me, Jackie, but like, does it make me toxic that the I stand Cassie and Nate like so much, even though like it's horrible for a multitude of reasons? Like, I just really ship and I think that they would be beautiful together and that scene of them like being in love and like her being pregnant was so cute oh I don't think it makes you toxic thank you um and then the (laughs) other thing I wanted to say and this might be like my hottest take yet but the character Rue played by Zendaya I think is my least favorite character she's Mm. so self-destructive and I she struggles with addiction and like you have to have a lot of sympathy But she just, she has, like, so many good people around her. Like, this guy she met in N.A. who's, like, like like a dad to her almost. And she's just, like, rude to everyone. She's so rude to her mom. Like, I can't. She's, like, cheating on Jules, who's, like, the only person who's ever been nice to her. Like, she makes it really hard to be a friend. And I found myself just, like, not enjoying her scenes as much as I used to. Like, the whole show was, like, narrated by her. But to me, it's, like, now it's about, like, Maddie. And it's about Nate. Like, it's just about other things. Interesting. That does seem like a hot take. But also, as we know, sometimes the protagonist and the narrator is the least it's likable the character. And then, Jackie, I thought you'll find this interesting. There, there's so Because I saw this on TikTok. There's so much nudity in the show. Like, it's insane. 
And the only person who's never nude is Zendaya. So she obviously had some sort of like contract, right? Like I'm not showing my titties. Mm -hmm. But so what did you see on TikTok? Oh, people were talking about it. Like where is Zendaya's nudity scenes? Yeah, I think that's stuff that's like you flesh out common you know, for protagonists like flesh, carrie we never saw flesh out no pun intended before Hello. um like when you sign on for yeah. a show it's like this is what i am open but to it doing. reminds me of carrie in sex and the city like we saw everyone's boobs we never saw carrie's boobs yeah i guess when you are top billing that's something that you can negotiate for, yeah and then the last thing I wanted to say was I was truly quaking when Nate confronted his dad about, like, the tapes and fucking jewels and, like, his history of cheating on his mom. I was quaking. Like, those Cal-Nate scenes, like, really get to me. And I figured out who Cal looks like. Jackie, I'm going to send you a picture of his person. Okay. Wait, and my phone's gonna... over, over yonder. Give me a second. Okay. Because I have a call, you guys. Jackie's headphones are out. I think he looks like Colton Old Underwood in, like, 30 years. Um... And I think Jackie will appreciate that call because I was like watching him in the hospital. I'm like, oh my God. Okay, you ready? I am ready. So I'm going to text you a picture to your cell phone. Jackie sent. Okay. Wait, don't open that one. It was the wrong one. Oh God, okay. Sorry, I'm I'm being moronic. Is this as good no, of a call is... as Hannah B and Probably not. Mr. Probably Rose? Not. Probably not. Okay, open the picture. I didn't get it yet. Okay, like it's been sent, so. Three dots. There, it's there. Okay. I'm looking tell at this me, man. Tell me that's not a grown-up Colton Underwood. You don't see it? Not from this picture. But a lot of my like calls have to do with mannerisms and expressions. And so if he... So maybe you need to start watching Euphoria. If, yeah, if I saw him in action, maybe I would agree. But I can't go off of a picture. I'm sorry. Okay, well, if you watch Euphoria, let me know what you think about that call. I don't think I'm going to watch He Euphoria. also looks like, like a combination, actually. Do you, do you know what Colton Underwood's boyfriend looks like? No. Well, he looks like if Colton Underwood and his boyfriend had a baby, and the man was 50 years old. Got That's it. my call. What's I'm, this I'm guy? What This guy, what's he from? He's from other he's stuff. He's giving Riverdale. He's giving something. What is his actor? Oh, Eric Dane. Uh, what's he from? I don't know, but that's definitely a familiar name. I feel like he's from something that we fucking love. Yeah. Burlesque. No, burlesque. Burlesque. Oh, but he's the rich man who tries to date Christina Aguilera. Yes, exactly. Crying. Oh, okay. Isn't that just the best feeling when you scratch when you that When you figure it out itch? on your own, like without IMDb. Oh, I used IMDb. But it's Uh-oh. a better feeling when you figure it, yes, when you figure it out on your own, Lady Shackleton. So that is my... Um, final thoughts on euphoria hopefully this week's episode like something happens because nothing happened but it's still like an enjoyable show to watch even when it's like boring got it okay cool well thanks for updating us my song comes out tomorrow do not forget well it comes out at midnight well tonight yeah midnight tonight okay i think i'll be up so wow crazy i don't think i will i've been going to bed at like 10 o'clock you go to sleep so early i go to sleep so late i know because it's on the weekends i literally go to bed at 6 a.m so i actually get my sleep on the weekdays interesting I'm a twisted individual. You're quite twisted. Okay, so I'll be up. I'll celebrate with everyone if you're not around. Cool. I'll, I'm going to do my best to stay awake. But it's called you- 100% Spotify, iTunes, streaming, everywhere. And that's our show. Thank you so much for listening to The Morning Toast, the millennial morning show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us The Morning Toast and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. The Morning Toast Instagram page is still down and we are still working on it. Thank you for your patience. We love you. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Four. Friday, Friday, getting down on Friday. Goodbye.